Have you ever got to the end of a novel and the author drops in some twist or big revelatory detail which feels so inconsistent with the rest of the book that you're just left like, Oh, why did you do that? You've just spoiled the whole thing! Hello, I have just finished reading the novel Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers, and I have some feelings, strong feelings, about the ending of it. And it made me want to uh, think more about this issue, about the, the endings of novels, and whether they, they work or don't work, and how sometimes the way the author ends a book feels like it, it can just take the whole experience of the, the novel that you've just read. And I'm not talking about the kinds of endings that it's like, like oh, this isn't the uh, the happy ending that I wanted to have, or uh, or I, I wanted this, this couple to get together, or I wanted this, this villain to be punished. Um, that, that's not the kind of plot details I'm talking about. I'm talking about when the, the author seems to be manipulating the plot in a way that really shows their hand in a way which is inconsistent with the integrity of the characters that they've just written about over a, a number of hundreds of pages, and uh, but also isn't consistent with the, the overall tone of the book. And, uh, and I found that's what happened with this novel, and so I want to talk about this experience as well as a number of other books and examples I can think of where this has happened in my reading experience, and uh, and I'm curious to see if other people have felt the same way about these books, or if you have a book that when you got to the end of it, the way it was concluded felt like a real betrayal of um, you as, as a reader. And I know that this is going to be difficult to do without any plot spoilers, because obviously talking about the endings of, of books, so I am going to talk about them kind of in a general way, which hopefully won't spoil the overall plot of the book. And, and it's sort of funny, because I know that uh, sometimes when you talk about how the ending of a book can kind of spoil the experience, how this can almost make you more intrigued as a reader and want to know, like, like oh, well, how does it end? And so hopefully you will be intrigued to pick up some of these books if you haven't read all of them already to see how you feel about the ending. And, I'd really like to know how more people feel about it. And actually, I got to reading Small Pleasures sooner rather than later because uh, Anna James um, messaged me saying how disappointed she was by the ending of this. And, you know, we've been reading all of the books um, that have been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And so, and this is one of them. And, and so I thought, ooh, I wonder if I'm going to feel the same way. So I picked it up as well and, and uh, got to the end. and, and uh, and it would have been interesting if I had felt very differently, and then Anna and I could have had an argument about it. But um, but no, I felt really strongly the same way, and uh, and that it was such a betrayal of the whole um, the whole story because the the bulk of this novel I thought was really well done, really emotionally involving. I cared about the the characters, and I think that's the real issue that you grow to really care for the characters, and then the way the author ended it. It feel like, feels like she just sort of dropped them and wasn't um, wasn't staying staying true to to those characters and that experience, um, which was just so disappointing. And also, when she she there's a small afterword to this where she talks about how there were two real historical incidents that she wanted to write about in a novel, so she combined them in this novel, but they. It, one of these historical incidents felt more tacked on, like it, it was just sort of put on at the end rather than being integrated into the course of the story. And, uh, and yeah, and that just felt like such a, a shock it, it, um, or like a slap in the face because, uh, you know, you know it's, like, it's like ending a novel saying like, and then the character woke up and it was all a dream or then like a nuclear bomb hit and, and they, they, everyone died and that's the ending. <laughs> You know, um, and that's not how this novel ends. It ends in a different way, but uh, but but yeah, it sort of felt like a similar thing. And um, yeah, and I just think that that's such a shame. And there's there's so many good period details about this, and there's lots of interesting issues that that she raises over the course of the story. But um, and and so I'm glad I read it for those reasons. But but yeah, I just think it's such a shame how it ended. Uh, so uh, so yeah, that's that's a that's a big disappointment. 
disappointment. So some of the other books I want to talk about is uh, one I know a lot of people have read, which is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And this isn't so much the very ending of this novel I want to talk about, but it's sort of a s slow downward, downward spiral um, of, of the story of this novel where uh, the central character of it, um, Jude, things go increasingly bad for him. Uh, they, they don't get better and horrible thing after horrible thing happens to him. And I know a lot of people sort of responded to this quite negatively, um, feeling like the author was being too controlling of the, the plot of the, the story and, and not allowing the characters um, some relief or to find any happiness in, in their life. And, uh, and uh, the, the author actually, I, I saw I saw um, Hania Yanagihara interviewed uh, about this and, and she said uh, a number of times that, um, that she wanted to write about a character uh, who couldn't be saved and, uh, and that's what she gives like time after time uh, when you think maybe this, this character will be saved, um, they're, they're sort of blocked at every corner that they, they turn and that does feel like the author is controlling the, the plot too much and uh, and I sort of felt that way myself although like overall I really appreciated um, this novel and what it showed and said about abuse and the the dynamic of friendships and what we tell our friends and what we we don't tell our friends and what we keep hidden from our friends and I, I think there were a lot of interesting and um, and issues that were explored really well in this novel but I do agree that yeah the the author was sort of controlling the plot and the characters too much and it's sort of a funny thing to say because obviously the author is always in control of the story but it's this thing again where you grow to care so much about the characters and feel and empathize with them and and see yourself in them in different ways that they do begin to feel like real people and so you want them treated with respect and not sort of being overly controlled by this tyrannical force which is the author um, which is really steering their their fate in a in a way which is way too controlled um, it, it just it doesn't feel consistent to the integrity of the characters, um, which is, is what I was trying to describe before. Although I do think this novel, you know, stays consistent overall. I mean, it, it doesn't, it, um, it, it is very bleak and, uh, and it stays that way through much of the novel, at least like the, the second half of the novel, it, um, it stays that way. And I know that is off-putting for a lot of readers and make them not want to pick it up, but it does take you on an emotional journey. And, uh, and so I, yeah, I, I did appreciate things about this novel. I've been asked before about how I feel about this. And I, I, um, I, I wrote a whole review of it before, so I'll put a link to that below if you want to know more of my, my thoughts about it. But, uh, but yeah, obviously this is <laughs> remaining a, a, one of the most controversial novels, I think, of the past decade. Uh, then I want to talk about another book, which I'm slightly nervous to discuss because uh, it's such a much beloved classic, and uh, that's Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And I read this for the first time last year, and I talked about it at the time about how overall I massively enjoyed this this novel. I, I thought it's so well done, it's so atmospheric, it's so psychologically tense, and uh, and yeah, and I think it's it's wonderful. But um, but the ending of it I think is a bit clunky and I, I had the sort of experience in that I had seen the film of this book and so I knew how it was going to end and uh, so when it got towards the end I could see how the author was kind of steering events or certain characters away from a particular place so a big disastrous thing could occur there while they weren't there. Um, again, I'm trying not to give spoilers even though this is a classic. I think a lot of people know how this concludes but uh, but but yeah, and so the, the characters were kind of kept away from this place and then they went back there and then, oh, then they see that this big disastrous thing has occurred and yes, it's poetic justice. It, it makes perfect sense. I I am um, I don't disagree with how it ended, but but the way it gets there, I thought was like a little bit clunkily done, and did sort of show the author working in a way that um, I sort of forgot about through most of the novel because I was just so involved in the story and the characters and uh, and yeah, and so. Um, 
Yeah, I, I felt like that was a bit disappointing in how she handled that. But obviously, it's ridiculous to criticize Re Rebecca in this way because it's like such a classic and, and such an amazing novel overall. Uh, then I want to talk about a couple books which are maybe a bit less known. Um, there's a novel called The Other Name by John Foss, the, a Norwegian writer, and I read this because this was list long listed for the International Booker Prize last year. And this is a novel with out with hardly any plot at all. It's about a, an artist um, trying to create a painting and that's the entire story. Um, but uh, but through it, he um, he encounters this other person, which is kind of his double and or maybe like an alternative version of himself or a kind of doppelganger sort of situation. Um, it's a uh, and how he explores that it's like it's very philosophical and thoughtful and um, and so I found so much of this novel really meaningful and thoughtful though yeah it's not the kind of book that you read for like a strong plot if you want a riveting plot um, but when it gets to the end of the novel they he reveals something about this character's past and a specific incident from this character's past which really is felt really jarring and um, and made me wonder like well am I supposed to recast his psychological being and things um, that he's gone through um, but through the lens of this incident which occurred or am I just supposed to take this as, a, as another sort of strange incident that occurred to him in his life in a, in a whole series of strange incidents that, that occur and, um, and yeah and I'm still really unsure how I feel about that and, and what in what I should take away from the ending of this book. But interestingly, this is part of a series, um, so this is the first two books, and, um, and he, it uh, has been translated to English, the um, third and fourth and fifth parts of this book, and then the final parts of this book are going to be published later this year. Um, so yeah, it's a whole series called Septology, and, uh, and I haven't read this yet, but I'm really intrigued to see where it goes from here and where the, the character develops from here, yeah, because of the way um, that this, um, the first two parts of this um, book end. So, so yeah, that'll be really interesting to see. And then uh, there is the the overall winner of the International Booker Prize last year, which is The Discomfort of Evening. And I had a lot of issues with this book, actually, all throughout it. But in particular, the, the way this book ends, I really hate it. And, and I thought, was the author just yeah, controlling it in, in this way and controlling the, the, the plot of the novel and, and wanting to end with a sort of shock ending rather than um, yeah, staying true to the characters they're writing about. And, uh, and yeah, and so I, I had real issues with the ending of this novel, though I had, I had issues with the number of other aspects of the novel as well, um, which I've, I've talked about before. But, um, but, but yeah, I thought uh, it, it, um, it was particularly disappointing the way that this novel ends. And then finally, I want to talk about a novel which um, I called Some Hell by Patrick Nathan, uh, which I did really enjoy. And the ending does have one of these sort of twist endings where I think that the author is sort of showing their hand and, and, uh, and intervening in the, the story in a way um, which was slightly unfair, but which actually I thought did work. It, um, I did really, in, I, I, I thought it was an interesting take because it did sort of feel consistent with the overall tone of the book and and how it was going and um and so yeah i did like how he ended this but i know other readers who have read this felt really betrayed by it and and like there's another booktuber a great booktuber named chris um who read this and was reviewing this and and absolutely hated how it ended and said it it spoiled the entire novel for him and but i yeah i i felt really differently i i thought it um it was really interesting how he sort of forced this different point of view at the end which made me think about things in a, in a different way and and so uh, so I think it can go really 
either way for, for readers and can be quite subjective in how we interpret the endings of, of books and whether they work for us or don't. And so, so yeah, like I said, um, be really interested to know what other people think about the endings of these particular novels or if you've read a novel that, that you had really strong feelings about the, the ending on or if you know has a very controversial ending um, which some people loved and some people don't. Uh, please let me know about all of that in the comments below and we can have a discussion. Uh, but thank you for watching and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.